FC Marshall Stockwell 2 versus the Marshall Emberton. Marshall Emberton. Okay, all right, Mum, get out of the shot. Get out of the shot, Mum. Marshall Stockwell 2 versus the Marshall Emberton. And the weird thing about these two speakers is they're both 20 watts on paper. 20 watts, both 20 watts, 20 watts, 20 watts. What's going on? Could one possibly be louder than the other? And if it's going to be louder than the other, it's going to be the, the bigger one, isn't it? Or is it? Because people are saying to me, why should I get the Marshall Emberton or the Marshall Stockwell? Because the Emberton goes louder. And I thought, does it? Because I haven't actually compared them together. And that's why I'm now going to compare them together. As I pointed out before, the Marshall Emberton has one of the most fantastic turn-on sounds. One of the meatiest unnecessary sounds going. And I'm saying 20 watts versus 20 watts because... <laughs> We've got passive radiator, passive radiator, full range driver, full range driver, 10 watts, 10 watts. Now, we do have two full range drivers, but they're five watts on the Stockwell 2, and that's where the difference is gonna be. We have a decent sized woofer. It's an active woofer, as we would say, because we've got a passive radiator. So, passive means it's being driven by uh, air pressure. Active is being driven by the amp, so we've got we got 10 watts to the or woofer, 10 watts to the full, full range drivers, whereas we've got the 20 watts all going to the full range drivers on the Marshall Emberton. And on paper, that already tells me we're gonna expect a brighter sound from the Emberton, even if all things were equal, because half of, that's, half of the amp is going to the woofer. It's gonna sound a bit meatier. That's what we're gonna expect on paper. Just to quickly tell you, uh, other differences are <clears throat> 170 quid, 170 quid. It's not the cheapest on the block, but hey, the brilliant, brilliant thing about the Sonus Roam is, since we had the Sonus Roam, it's fantastic, 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 because 160 pound, it makes every other speaker good value. So since we've had the Sonus Roam, 160 pound, every speaker on the table is good value. 169, prime day, I did see it for 120, that's blinking good value, but it's 120 pound for the Emberton, 20 watts, 20 watts and that one's considerably cheaper. They are both uh, from China. Another big difference you may not know is Aptex on the Stockwell 2. They say we don't have Aptex. My phone says Aptex and the Marshall Emberton, I can tell you, is SBC. Neither, none of them. Lifestyle speakers, come on, make them more usable. There is no TWS, no true wireless stereo pairing. You're stuck with one speaker, not even uh, party mode on these speakers. You can use the Stockwell 2 is a power bank, you can't use that as a power bank. There is all, there is an auxiliary input. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. It's getting a bit old fashioned, isn't it, auxiliary? No, we do love auxiliary inputs. No auxiliary input, it's just the USB connection. As I said, 20 watts for each of them. But hey, 20 watts, but mm, 1.4 kilos, 700 grams. That's the exact same uh, amplification power on paper, but it's half the weight and possibly goes louder, according to you guys. But hey, another big difference is IPX4. Oh, don't get it very wet at all. You've got mm, big troubles, but IPX7, you can chunk that in your pool. One meter of water up to 30 minutes, that's brilliant. Another weird thing is both rated uh, by Marshall, and when I say Marshall, not really by Marshall, it's Zound Industries who are making these speakers on license for uh, Marshall. So it's just the Marshall badge, really. Make them to look like they're amplifiers. Both rated 60 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That's weird, although, mm, here's a bit of a clue. They do rate plus or minus six decibels on the Stockwell 2, and they don't specify for the Marshall Emberton. So, both got 50 millimeter uh, full range drivers, but the big difference is 10 watts of power going to each of them on the Emberton, five watts only. In terms of uh, latency, my YouTube test, they're both pretty decent. A bit better on the Stockwell 2, 50 milliseconds, 80 milliseconds on the Emberton, but hey ho, in this modern world, that's both very, that, they're both very usable. You will not get lip sync issues unless you're, ah, you're probably measuring it like I do, or you're very, very sensitive to that sort of thing. Gonna get straight in. So, around 40%. This is a low volume test for speakers we already know don't go very loud anyway. Around 40%. <laughs>
certainly me to tell ya. Mm. They may both be 20 watt speakers, but there is a big difference in the sound. Not just in the sound, but in the sound stage. You're getting a decent old sound stage with the Marshall Stockwell 2. That's completely missing. Certainly these volumes on the Marshall Emberton. Obviously a very bright speaker, we already knew that. By the way, the drivers are set up. It's certainly upper bass heavy and compared to the Stockwell 2, which has a lot more meat on the bones. There's more bass going on, not just a bit more. In terms of deep bass, it's 15 decibels up on the Emberton. That's already your clue what to expect down the road while you're telling me, yeah, but it goes louder. And let's define later on what louder means. One, one is, one's a decent old sound and it's uh, it's quite balanced, whereas we may be, we're already getting a suck out in those mids. That's very obvious on the Marshall Emberton. We're gonna push it a little bit more. We're gonna go to 65% volume comparison. <laughs> So kind of a sweet spot for both of these speakers, around 65%, maybe of most note. On the Emberton, there's a double peak, around 80 hertz, 100 hertz, and then there's a roll off. You look at the Stockwell, we've got the double peak here, around the 180 hertz, and there's a whole new peak into the bass, into the deep bass, and there's a major difference between two speakers. No deep bass, we're getting some deep bass. Stockwell 2, mids heavy compared to the Emberton, but then the Emberton, much stronger in the highs, much brighter compared to the Stockwell 2. 2 dB up in the highs on the Emberton. In terms of that deep bass at 50 hertz, we are 12 decibels down on the Emberton compared to the Stockwell 2. So these volumes, which may well be a, a sweet spot uh, for speakers that don't go uh, that loud, are around the 65% mark. It is closer. It is closer between these two speakers now, but hey ho, some of those differences remain, not least uh, the size of the soundstage on the Marshall Stockwell 2. There's more fizz going on, and there's clear, clearer, there's clearly more uh, bass extension on the Stockwell 2. But the Emberton is now uh, less upper bass dominant. It is a bit more uh, balanced now. Sounds pretty decent, but we are comparing two speakers here, and the clue is, I've said 28 times already, the Stockwell 2, and it's the Marshall Emberton, Marshall Emberton 1. And the point being, while one may go louder than the other, the, act, the way it's doing it is very different. And in these two comparisons so far, clearly there's only one winner for my money, and that's what counts in, in my world. It's the Sockwell 2 is the winner so far. Keep saying these speakers are known for not going that loud, but let's try going a bit louder. 80% volume.
I use that track for two particular reasons. One, one is I find it a particularly a beautiful, a lovely track. And the second one is it's vocals dominant. So there's not a lot going on in the bass. And since we already know the difference between these two speakers is gonna be deep bass, decent old uh, full bass on the Stockwell 2, whereas it's a bright high-end dominant uh, speaker with, with the Zac out in the mids, but hey, it does have some bass. But when we get a track like that that doesn't have a bass going on, hey, it's pretty close between these two speakers. And this is why genre matching is gonna be really, really important. If all your tracks are deep bass dominant, there's only one speaker. I might as well throw this one away now. You're going to take the stock well too, but hey ho, bass, bass isn't for everybody. I know most of you guys are like, I just want to know how much bass, how much bass. But there are going to be some of you, and I do know, because you do say it to me, I don't care about bass. But how accurate is it? How is it in the mids? How is the high is nice? Yeah, is it going to be harsh on the... You, you don't care about that. But if you don't care about the bass, if you listen to a lot of vocals, and it's only the vocals that count, well, it, it, this is the travel speaker, isn't it, of the two? IPX7, um, it's, it, it's smaller, it's half the weight, uh, and it possibly goes louder, a spoiler alert. So yes, if you take away the bass, there's hardly anything in it, because we already know, half of the power on the Stockwell 2 is going to the woofer. Whereas all the power here, because the, the because we've got passive radiators, there's no pa actual power going to them, all 20 watts are going to the full range drivers. So of course, it's gonna be mids, up a, it's got a suck out in the mids, but technically you'd expect it to be more mids and highs dominant. So, only one thing left to find out. If we push them to maximum volume, you're telling me the Empton goes louder and oh, there's probably nothing in it between the two of them. Well, let's, let's see. Maximum of volume. So ultimately, yeah, Emberton, significantly louder than the Stockwell 2 by three decibels. But the point being here, and note the scale is different on these two graphs. We've got a peak here, minus 24, and it's minus 20 on the Stockwell 2 graph. Bass is basically missing, apart from some upper bass on the Emberton, compared to the Stockwell 2. In terms of that deep bass, Stockwell 2, 14 dB up on the Emberton. And the Emberton, massively bright. Remember, we, we should be seeing some sort of slope if this was a natural graph. And look how bright that three kilohertz region is compared to, we do have some sort of natural slope on the Stockwell too. So when you put all the amplification into the highs, it's easier to go louder, but we're retaining bass on the Stockwell too. So both 20 watts, but one's got bass, the other hasn't. The one that hasn't is gonna go louder. And the winner is the Marshall Emberton. Well, hang on a sec, <laughs> maybe not. Only if a screech fest is what you're after because there's no bass, there's none, it's gone. You can say goodbye to your bass. And if it's just about going technically louder, well, this goes technically massively louder, three decimals louder. But hey-ho, it's doing that because there's no bass. The bass sucks up the power in terms of going louder. So if you don't bother with the bass at all, you can easily drive the mids and the highs to go louder. But we are still getting a reasonable listen on the Stockwell. So yes, it's really not that, that loud in the real world. 
on that track, I was, at one meter, I was getting around 95 decibels uh, or 97 decibels. They're not loud. 100 and over is what we're looking at for, for decent sound levels. You keep getting, um, by the way, my maximum peak decibel, re the whole point behind them, you're getting them wrong. First of all, it's measured at one meter and it's on that track. It does not transfer between tracks. No, tracks are not the this, this same volume. Uh, some You get quiet tracks, as you would know, Mac and louder tracks, but it's relative to the two speakers. But under 100 decibels, you know, that's not going to be a loud speaker. And also, these are peaks. When you see most people using a, a sound level uh, meter, they're measuring max. They're not measuring peaks. There is a difference. Peaks is true instantaneous loudness. Uh, the, the loudness that's gonna, you're gonna go, oh, I didn't, didn't like that. But the rest of the track may be blinking quiet. So note the difference between peak, max, and, and luffs indeed. Luffs is the loudness across the whole track. So five decibels down in overall bass, but hey-ho, in the bass that we really love, the deep, deep, deep bass, 14 decibels down. I, I don't even need to tell you what the measurements are. Bass, no bass. <laughs> it's, it's pretty simple. So there you've got your Stockwell 2 versus the Marshall Emberton. Yes, you were absolutely right. The Marshall Emerton goes louder, but hey-ho, it's a screech fest. It's not a listenable sound, not to my ears anyway. And they do it because there's no bass. But if you want a balanced sound, it's the Stockwell 2. And there, four is the reason why you've got to know your specs, what you're talking about. It's no good saying, well, I got a speaker and it goes louder than your speaker. Yeah, but what's your speaker doing? That's the real point here. For me, this is a decent enough um, listen at moderate to low volumes. I really liked it uh, in my previous video when I did it against the Soundcore Boost. Having listened to more genres, um, I kind of now favoring this, the Soundcore Boost again. This is overly bright, and so I've mentioned it before on that previous on the eighty percent uh, on the eighty percent comparison. Genre matching with your speakers is really important because if your if the tracks you listen to are not very bright, that's going to be a good match. But if you're listening to uh, awful recordings and bright recordings, that will become a screech fest. So having listened to more genres than I did in uh, my first video, which, you know, I, that was on those, on the com actual tracks that I compared with, I did think it came out better. But over multiple genres, you're gonna have a problem matching that. It's, it's a nice speaker, don't push it over 70%, but I do like, but of the two speakers every day of the week, I'm going for the Stockwell too. I, I throw that in the pool, I throw it away in the pool, I know someone else can pick it up because it's IPX7, and fine, they can go away and play it. I'm sticking with the IPX4 Marshall Stockwell 2. The winner on this table is the Marshall Stockwell 2, as far as I'm concerned. It's not all about going loud, because yes, it goes louder, but I would no way I'm going to listen to it at those volumes, because it's a complete uh, screech fest. Marshall Stockwell 2 also does not go that loud, but it has become one of my go-tos. All these speakers um, have issues. None of them are perfect. This is certainly a more accurate speaker than the Emberton um, and does a decent d job. Of course, I don't know. You probably, maybe you never watched any of any other Marshall, Marshall um, reviews and you don't know. These are all about, I could call it pseudo surround. They call it um, Blumline processing and true stereophonic. These are all marketing words. Just know they had a bit of reverb um, and that <laughs> may all be maybe the only thing they're doing to create a bit more of a stereo imaging. It works pretty well on the Stockwell 2, not so much uh, for me, for my money on the Emberton, because the, the sound stage alone is in a different planet on the Stockwell 2 compared to the Emberton. I hope you got something out of my video, this review of the two, of the, two the Emberton and the Stockwell 2, and I thank you for watching. I got their life, I got their life. Ain't a project wife, got my logic right, cause I'm not your type. I ain't about that life. I ain't about that life. Sorry, my honey, get it right. I'ma just live my life. I ain't about that. I ain't about that life. Uh.